In chapter seven, we want to work with the most important curve to us in a basic statistics class, which is the normal probability distribution. Now, you've actually already seen the normal probability distribution back in chapter three, because it's the same distribution that we used for the empirical rule. Right? Now, to make this leap to the normal probability distribution, we want to take a moment and think about where we've been and where we're going to. So to do that, let's look at these two probability distributions. Now this one is the one for the number of tails when six fair coins are tossed. You're familiar, right? Because that's binomial. You have six trials, they're fixed. The probability of success is 0.5, which is consistent. You have success, which is tails, failure, which is heads, and so on. And you can create a probability distribution from that setup rather simply actually with a computer based on the binomial probability distribution. And then it asks us to shade the region that corresponds to the probability of four or five tails. Well, four tails is right here, five tails is right here, and if you add up those two areas, you would have the probability. And of course, we learned, well, actually we learned in chapter five, that all the bars must add up to one, right? Because the sum of the probabilities for a sample space must be one. Now this, is chapter six. Chapter six, there we go. <laughs> I was about to write that backwards. All right, so chapter six, because it's discrete. And you can see it with the histogram. Either you have zero heads, one head, two heads, three heads, and so on. That's it, All right? Now, what if it's not discrete? What if it's in chapter seven and it's continuous? All right, well, consider the diameter of a rose blossom. So you'd have to take out those little calipers, those little pinchy things, to measure the diameter of a rose blossom. But it's continuous, right? If you just have a better measure caliper, then you should be able to get more decimal places, right? So they ask us to shade the region that corresponds to the probability of having a blossom between 20 centimeters and 25 centimeters. So I guess I'll do this in orange here. So 20 centimeters is right here. 25 centimeters is right here. And so what they're asking us to do is to find that area. Right, that area will be that probability with 20 over here, 25 over here. We have a problem though. We know how to find the area of a rectangle. It's not exactly difficult. The area of a rectangle is length times width. And the width here is are always one. So it's always one times whatever the height is, and that height is that probability. So that's simple enough. But down here, that's a curve. And in order to find that area right there, you would need calculus. Or you'd need a calculator that knows calculus and can do it for you, which is what we're going to use. Because we don't expect you to know calculus necessarily to be in the class. So therefore, you're not going to do integration, which is what that would take. So we will make either StatCrunch or our calculator do this for us. But think about what you're doing. You're finding that area right there. And if you find that area, that will be that probability. But as before, the area under the entire curve is one. It has to be, right? Not the area of that particular section. That particular section has to be less than one in order to make this work. But the area under the entire probability distribution must be one in order for it to be probability. Because probability requires that the, well, probability rules require that probabilities for the entire sample space must sum to one. So in chapter six, we're working with discrete probability distributions, right? So we'll have to add up individual bars and so on. With chapter seven and beyond, we'll be working with continuous distributions. And continuous distributions, there aren't particular bars, you're just shading regions under the curve, uh, between the curve and the x-axis, I should say. Now there's one other kind of interesting thing to note, which is a single line has no area. So the probability of exactly 20 centimeters is zero, because no rose is exactly 20 centimeters. It's 20.01324 centimeters, right? So let me give you this example. The probability of exactly 20 centimeters for that rose is zero. It's zero. The probability of any exact measurement on its own is zero because the vertical line has no area. And we said that the area has to be the probability. 
Interesting. So that's kind of a sneaky thing to notice. And that's true of continuous distributions. But it's not true in discrete probability distributions. I mean, think about it. What's the probability of zero heads? We were doing that all the time in binomial, right? In the binomial probability distribution area. Because you could use binome PDF and or you could use stat crunch and set it to equal. I could find the probability of two, no problem. But down here, you cannot find the probability of 10. It's not possible. It's zero. That's what it is, right? Because no rows is exactly 10. Not exactly. It's 10 if you round it, but that's not what we're doing, right? It's 10 point, you know, one, three, two. That's what it really is. All right, so that's an important thing to note because that's a di bit different, quite a bit different actually from discrete probability distributions.